those who refuse the gift of eternal life are condemned to wander in the darkness of eternal night. Coming this fall from SJS Direct. There's been this proposal by members of Black Lives Matter to defund the police, and there was a city council meeting to disband the Minneapolis Police Department. And in New York City and Los Angeles, we've had Mayor Bill de Blasio and Mayor Garcetti taking funds from the police department to put into so-called community programs. Now, when I take a critical examination of this so-called proposal to defund the police, I see a really bad idea getting ready to be implemented. Moreover, I see people promoting this idea not understanding how destructive it truly is. As a man who grew up during the dark days of the 1980s during the crack epidemic, I can tell you that there is a need for the police, and the police and law enforcement are an essential service. Because without police, you're going to get the chaos of the dark days of the 1980s, 1980s and the early 1990s of the crack epidemic, and you're going to see a return to the crime that practically tore cities like New York completely apart. Now, as someone who grew up during that dark period of the 1980s and early 1990s of the crack epidemic, I can tell you what happened to this city without enough police officers. When there weren't enough police officers to go out here and deal with many of these criminals, we had these criminals practically terrorizing New York City and practically holding people hostages in places like housing projects. Because what happened during that time was these drug dealers took over entire neighborhoods and like here in the South Bronx, and as they took over these neighborhoods, they practically ruled with an iron fist. So these dope dealers, they took over entire blocks of a neighborhood, and people were practically at their mercy. People had to literally follow, go out here and follow all of the unwritten social rules that these dope dealers imposed on people. You couldn't go out and use your parks. You couldn't go out and use your playgrounds. You couldn't even sometimes even go out of your building at certain hours. And people practically lived in fear of these dope dealers because these dope dealers, were, because they had the money uh, that most people didn't have in the community and they had the weapons to enforce their power. They put people in such fear that they just, they literally forced themselves to submit to their authority. And again, this was the rule with an iron fist because if you went against these dope dealers or disagreed with these dope dealers, you found yourself staring down the barrel of a 9mm, a Mac 10, or a box cutter, and there was nobody to protect you from them. And if you spoke against these dope dealers, chances are you would either wind up dead in the street or you would wind up getting shot up or found somewhere. And again, this would be the message sent out here to everybody that if you went against these dope dealers, you would wind up dead. And if your daughter was somebody who was attractive and caught this dope dealer's eye, that woman couldn't say anything against that dope dealer even and could not deny him any sort of advances. That's the type of life people had to deal with in the dark days of the late 1980s and 1990s when these dope dealers were practically running neighborhoods. And we didn't see an end to that until law enforcement started ratcheting things up and busting up these dope gangs and a lot of people, again, don't understand the danger people had because they, a lot of these people who were a part of Black Lives Matter, they were born in the late 90s, they were born in the 2000s, 
and they never lived through that kind of violence and terrorism that people my age live through. So since they didn't live through that kind of violence perpetrated by these urban terrorists, where again, all you, if you just simply disagreed with these guys, you would wind up literally with your life at risk. And if these guys were having beef with a rival dealer or a rival gang, they would have these shootouts. And if your kids were out here and you were coming to school or coming home from school and they got caught in the crossfire, these guys would simply sit there and go, that's a shame, but I got the guys who I'm having a beef with. So black, a lot of these Black Lives Matter people don't know the horrors people went through dealing with this kind of terrorism and dealing with this kind of violence. Moreover, they don't know about the corruption that went on with many of these businesses, like these store owners who colluded with these dope dealers. And again, they colluded with these dope dealers to further oppress the community. So they don't understand why law enforcement is important and they don't understand why we need law enforcement to protect all of the citizens from the types from the the t imposing of these unwritten laws created by the select few dope dealers and gang members who aren't about allowing us to express our freedoms given to us by the United States Constitution no these urban terrorists want to create a fiefdom where they have all of the power and they don't want any of the responsibility because without law enforcement to enforce the law, you cannot get investment and without law enforcement to enforce the law, you cannot have a safe environment for people to build businesses in the community. Because when I looked at New York City and I was a resident of New York City for over 46 years, I saw how Rudy Giuliani's crime um, initiatives wound up get, getting it to the point where we started to see investment. Because when you have no police and no resources, what happens is people who have money and resources, they move out of these especially black communities and they wind up taking their resources elsewhere. And the only people left there are poor blacks and other poor minorities and a cadre of foreign businesses like Korean hair salons and hair supply stores and nail stores and Arab grocery stores, which underserve the black community and take money out of the black community while your dope dealers sit there on top of a fiefdom that is gynocentric and again, created a welfare state where people are dependent and remain in poverty and with no way out because the terrorism prevents people from building businesses and prevents people from investing in business. So that's why we need law enforcement. And instead of talking about defunding law enforcement, what your Black Lives Matter needs to talk about is trying to, de to, to change law enforcement, most importantly, changing the culture of law enforcement because the culture is the big problem and that culture is all about this every about blue being first when it's about it's supposed to be about them serving their community that's what we're really the culture needs to change because your law enforcement today has an us versus them mentality and a lot of the that allows a lot of these racists to come in because a lot of these racists they have this we are us and they they don't see police as serving the community they see police as whites controlling a community more importantly seeing whites containing these predatory black people and that prevents them from seeing crime objectively giving a pass to many of these foreign store owners who go out here and sell things like these loose cigarettes and lead to situations like Eric Garner getting murdered for allegedly selling a loose cigarette. Meanwhile, there are numerous Arab-owned stores that sell the exact same loose cigarette and law enforcement will, pet, will give them a pass. Meanwhile, they go out here searching 
for an Eric Garner. So that's why the culture of the police needs to change. Moreover, we need more brothers and sisters on the force in, and serving in their communities because the more black officers out there, the more black people can be protected by people in their own community. And if they live in those communities, they would have a vested interest in protecting their communities from people like your neighborhood dope man, your Pookie and Ray Ray, and looking out for the safety of everyone in, in building a community. So if you want, I don't see fund, defunding the police as something constructive because I lived during the dark period of the 1980s and 1990s where city budgets were at an all-time low, police officers were paid very poorly, and because they weren't paid well enough, they didn't have the motivation to go out here and fight crime. So I lived through that, and I saw the horrors that went on. So when I listen to people like your Black Lives Matter making this foolish proposal to defund the police and then talk about how they want to disband the police, I, I, I can't get with that because I know that as someone who lived in an area where there weren't enough law enforcement, this neighborhood was practically torn apart by these urban terrorists, and these dope dealers practically ruled this area with an iron fist to the point where the average old lady couldn't go out to get groceries, kids couldn't go to go play in a park, and you, you basically lived with, with fear and anxiety because if you walk by the wrong guy and stepped on his sneakers, you may not be coming home that day. They may be finding you in the morgue, or worse, they may be finding you in some sort of elevator shaft or in some river. Or if you talk to the wrong girl, you are looking at, again, getting shot in the head in the middle of the street, all because this was some dope dealer's girl. And that's, that's something you wouldn't want to live in. And I guarantee you, if, black, if these Black Lives Matter people get their way, we're going to go back to those dark days that I was living in. Because most people, again, they're thinking about this from an emotional perspective and not a logical, critical thinking one. Because if you were to think about this from a critical thinking perspective, you would say to yourself, yes, there are some racist officers out there. Yes, there are some race soldiers out there, and we need to deal with those race soldiers. Race soldiers, we do need to deal with these rogue cops. We need to deal with this culture that promotes blue first, and we need a comprehensive plan to bring more black and black people into law enforcement, and we need black people patrolling black communities and protecting and serving our own communities. That's what we need, but because there is no black agenda for Black Lives Matter, there is no set of goals for achieving this type of plan. And that's what we really need, as I see it. We don't need people making rhetorical statements like this whole defund the police and disband the police we need a black agenda, because if we have a black agenda, we can have a police department that is following a black agenda and a police department that looks to protect and serve black communities. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my positive fiction like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Smithsterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and coming to Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, Dark Succubus, the man who rules the world, is tempted by a sultry succubus in this all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Dark Succubus, in paperback or pre-order on Kindle Unlimited today.